Consuelo Mathletes, today is going to be, at least this part of it, is going to be a very short introduction to fractions and decimals, kind of a, also a bridge between expressions, which is what we've been dealing with up until now, and we're going to start moving into equations. Uh, all I really want to say here, and this really applies to anything, but for today it's only going to apply to fractions and decimals, is if you can give the answer in two different forms. In other words, you can choose between a fraction or a decimal in our case, but this will also apply to stuff later on. Always choose the form of the original problem, unless, of course, the instructions tell you to do otherwise. So, for example, if you have an expression, one-fourth plus one-fourth is two-fourths, which is one-half. The answer is not 0.5, it's one-half, okay? Pretty much the same problem, 0.25 plus 0.25 is 0.5, zero, it's not a half. Okay, well, there's several reasons for this, but just in a nutshell, um, this, has, this goes to a definition in math, an agreement among mathematicians, and that is a fraction is considered exact and a decimal is considered approximate, just by agreement, not in and of itself, but by agreement. So let's take the first problem, one-fourth plus one-fourth is a half. So we have an exact number plus an exact number gives us an exact number. Fine. The second problem, 0.25 plus 0.25 is 0.5. Well, 0.25 is approximate. 0.2, the other 0.25 is approximate. You can't get a exact and exact number from this. So basically, there are two approximate numbers, therefore the answer is approximate, it's not a half. Okay, this would also, that, those are expressions, this would also apply to equations. So if we have two-fifths x plus, e, sorry, two-fifths x equals three-fifths, then if we multiply both sides by five to get rid of the fractions, and I'll talk about that another day, you get two x equals three and x equals three halves. Not 1.5, but three halves. Okay, the second problem, 0.4x equals 0.6. Multiply both sides by 10 to get rid of the decimal. You get 4x equals 6, and x equals 1.5. Not 3 halves, but 1.5. By the way, what if on the third problem here, you have neither fractions nor decimals? So you have 4x equals 6, x equals 6 fourths. Do you give the answer 3 halves and 1.5? Well, everything's exact, so you can give the answer as 3 halves, so that's what you would choose, not the more approximate answer is 1.5. By the way, notice, and this is something I'll get into in a second, notice that on the first part here, the expressions, I can't get rid of fractions and decimals. But on an equation, that is the first thing you should always do with an equation. You should never deal with a fraction or a decimal if you've got an equation. If you've got an expression, you've got to. You can't change those. But equations, why? Because you do something to both sides of the equation. Okay, and basically what I'm going to do is deal with that next. And so this, again, I want to emphasize this next part is for equations only. And how do you get rid of fractions? How do you get rid of decimals? Okay, so how do you get rid of a fraction? You multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. So if we have two-thirds x plus three-fifths equals a half, the common denominator for that would be 30. So you multiply both sides by 30. And then you distribute on the left-hand side, you distribute the 30. Why do we distribute? Because there's a plus sign. Remember, you distribute two terms, and these are terms. So we multiply each one by 30. And then the th 3 cancels with the 30 to give us 10 times 2, which is 20. So again, what's happening here? The 3 is canceling with the 30 to give us 10, and times that times 2 will give us 20. Again, when I say you're getting rid of fr des fractions, what am I saying you're getting rid of? You're getting rid of the denominator. And then on the second one, 5 cancels with the 30 to give us 6, and then the remaining 6 times 3 is 18. And on the other side, 2 cancels with the 30 to give you 15, and 15 times 1 is 15. Then you just finish off the problem. We'll get to solving equations later. I just want to talk about getting rid of fractions and decimals right now. Okay, decimals, what do you do? You multiply both sides of the equation by 10 raised to a power. In other words, 
10, 100, 1,000, et cetera, et cetera, depending on how many decimal places you're trying to get rid of. If you're trying to get rid of one decimal place, you multiply by 10, two decimal places, 100, three decimal places, 1,000, et cetera, et cetera. So for this problem here, I'm trying to get rid of two decimal places. So I multiply each side of the equation by 100, distribute the 100 again. Why? Because on the left-hand side, they are terms, and you distribute to terms. And then if you just multiply by 100, all you're doing is moving decimal places. So then you'd finish off the problem. Okay, so what am I saying here? Two things. Number one, when you have a choice of giving the answer in two different forms, look at the original problem. That'll tell you which way to give it. And second, get rid of fractions and decimals if it's an equation. Again, don't get rid of fractions and decimals if it's not an equation. That's why the very first day, you know, the first thing I told you is what's an equation, what's not an equation. All right. Hope that makes sense to you. Have a good day.